I teach people to try to remain calm when they've had a knife put to them or someone's showing them a knife or when someone's got the upper hand and they're in a conflict situation and they, have, they need to show control over what's going on so that, that's, what I, I, that's what I tend to do with, with the security environment but being in control being in control of what's going on. Um, okay, all right. Now, one of the qualities I want to pick you up and I'm going to stretch you out. Right, somebody walks, you are front of house. Let's say you're front of house. I could use any environment. You're front of house, uh, working at the bank or something. Uh, you stay there right till the end of the, or, or let's say you, Okay, right, yeah. You're front of house, you stay there, you're last on duty, You've got, you do the lock up, locking up at the end of the night. Um, during the late hours of when you're working, somebody comes out of your establishment, a female or a male or a child, and they go to the police station and they say, I'm just opening this up and giving the example of how it's stretch out one word, all right? Uh, they walk into the police station and they'd say, I've been raped or I've been sexually assaulted or someone's physically attacked me. Any one of those. Let's say, let's use the word sexually assaulted. And the officer who's there will sit down and they'll say, right, now let's go through exactly what's happened. They'd have to get forensics involved. Let's go through exactly what's happened. And Questions will be asked. Right, so who was on duty at the time when you was there? Who was there? Do you know anybody there? Yeah, no, John works there. Let's say John works there. John works there and John was on duty. So why didn't you approach John first before coming to me or coming to the police station? And that person turns around, the person that's been assaulted, turns around and says, well, I would do but John isn't approachable. How bad would that look for a customer services representative? Would look very bad, wouldn't it? Can you see how I've, how I've given you an example of one word as to how it stretched it out? Now, all you need to do in your own time is think about what you're saying and attach something to it to make it more convincing. That's all you need to do. Because every word you use, right, there's power behind it. Now, some of the qualities that we look at here, they're not very clear because this whiteboard. Um, all right, let's have a look. Okay, being fair with people. How fair are you with people? Are you fair with people? I used to say, go home, get changed, I'll let you in for free. Go home and get changed? That's being fair, isn't it? Rather than keeping it cut and dry, sometimes I get some people that say, I'm only fair with them if they're fair with me. But you are the person in charge. You are the person who is supposed to be professional. You are the person who is supposed to initiate the behavioural reaction. So you want to get the behavioural reaction. All right. So are you professional then? Yeah, that would be the question, because being professional is a different, we're looking at it from a different angle here. If you're fair with people, you are being professional. If you're being cut and dry with people, then... Now, I personally have this um, philosophy that if I'm not getting through to someone, then that means I need to change the way I communicate. So, for example, if one of you says, Vicks, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not with you today, then I would say to you, all right, tell me where you're not with me, and I would try and meet your need. If there's resistance being uh, implemented in, within the session, it means there's something wrong. I went in a, um, it was a boxing session the other day, and the person doing the boxing session was arguing, or they'd do the technique, and whatever, they were arguing with the people in the session. They knew me, they couldn't argue with me because they know I know my stuff. They didn't say anything to me. But they were bringing up resistance within the session. 
and the guys within the session were saying, we're going to walk out. I like to play with the resistance. You know, like the Arkido man. All he'll do is he'll direct that force and then use the force on the person. All right? So using or playing with the resistance is better than going against it. That's what I do. All right, now, in terms of being honest, being approachable, being patient, water off a duck's back. Some people might get personalized with you, but do you react to it? I know we're only human. When some people bite at us sometimes, what do we do? We get our backs up, don't we? So in terms of thinking about how you're going to respond. All right, now, um, things that I want to add to this are oh, just two or three things that I want to add to this, all right? And what do you, what do you think of when I say, think of an animal? that represents confidence. What comes to mind? Lion. lion, yeah. Nearly all my courses that I've delivered, that all the lion always comes, some of you might say a tiger, which is fine, but that represents confidence to you. So, I've, so you don't need to look like a lion when you're dealing with people, but you need to show the confidence of a lion. You know when, how many of you got, oh, some of you, many of you got kids there? Kids, anybody got kids? All right, now, when you say no, and your kids say yes, you know what I'm talking about here? That's called congruence. So how, with how much conviction do you say your yeses, and how much do you say your noes? How do you come across? Does your body language match what you're saying? Because if you're not giving that impression, because kids can read body language excellently, can't they? They're brilliant at reading it, aren't they? They know when they can get away with something. Or how many times, let's reverse it a bit, how many times have you manipulated your parents a little bit to get what you want? Yeah. I remember I wanted this jacket when I was a young, I really wanted this jacket when I was a young child. The jacket was too expensive, but I... I was on at my dad for, it must have been about three months. I really wanted this jacket. He kept saying no to me. I got it in the end, rock him down a bit. But <laughs> you've done it before, haven't you? So recognizing where there's a no and where there's a yes and showing congruence with your body language. Because if you're saying, well, let me reassure you, mister, and you're not being on your heads down there, or your body language is not matching what you're saying, that person's gonna think you're not in control. When you're not in control, guess what? The other person won't believe you. They won't believe you. And if they don't believe you, the relationship, the communicational relationship between the both of you is gone. All right? So, uh, okay, so we've got the lion. If I say to you, think of a team worker. Give me an insect. Ants. Ants. Have you watched the programs? Have you seen where these little ants work together and how they work together? There's a little biblical saying that says, in the Bible, that says, Go to the ant, you lazy one. See its ways and become wise. <laughs> That's what it says, because the guy's lazy. <laughs> it's telling him to go to the ant and see. And you watch how these ants operate. Really, really effective. By yourselves... By yourselves, and now I say this in security, I do, but it, it's applicable everywhere. By yourselves, you are not a force. You are representing the organization, but you are not a force. But when you start to use your teamwork, and you start to use your team with you, you can accomplish, you become a formidable force. So in terms of working with with your key partners, so whoever's within the arrangement. If you haven't got the knowledge to get something completed, it's best for you to ask someone that has and not try and be the hero. If you're having trouble with uh, a customer and you've been bitten, when I say bitten, I mean they've made you angry as, as a speaking to you, or you're getting a little bit impatient, you know what? 
When I was at school, we were in class. The teacher, we used to love winding her up. She would smash her, the, 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 the books on the table and her eyes would go all up. We used to, you know what? We thrived on that. Yeah? So you know when someone wants to wind somebody up? You probably have been involved in this kind of thing as well. Like, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is when someone's wound you up, you're finished. If you've got wound up a little bit, you're finished. So they finish you off. As soon as I see that little bit of physiology, you're getting wound up. I'm going to thrive on that. Yeah? I'm going to go on and I'm going to push it all the way because you are the one that is supposed to be professional and I want to just take you off course a little bit. That's what I want to do. All right, so in terms of making sure that you're being fair, self-disciplined, you've got your lions, you've got your ants working together with, working together with each other. And I always say sometimes when the situation goes too far, because we're going to do a little bit of conflict management, when you've lost a customer, let's say you're, you're dealing with someone and you've lost them, it's best to become like the eagle. How many times have you been in a situation where something's going on and then, and then when you come out of that situation, don't you see it in a different light? Wouldn't you agree with me? Yeah? When you come out of the situation or you go and speak to a friend and they say, oh, guess what? And they give you a different angle. Because you were so emotionally involved with that situation, you didn't see it with the eagle's hindsight. You haven't seen it with that hindsight. Oh, I do. What I do is sometimes if it's not getting anywhere, I step out. I may consult with someone. And I'll say, the question I need to ask myself is, what other strategy can I use to get through to that person? What else can I use to get through to them? Uh -huh. So these three qualities, lions, and what did uh, Amir Khan say a couple of years ago when he got knocked out? Anybody watch boxing, by the way? Mm. Anybody been to boxing? No, no. Mm -hmm. What did he say? He said... It's t the Colombian knocked him out. He said, it's time to go back to the drawing board, ABC, yeah? So when, when we talk about ABC within scenarios and within dealing with people, when we're losing things, it's about showing confidence. You've got your ant like when it went there with you. And if, it's, if you've lost the situation, you're going back, yes? Are you following me? Yes? Okay. Right, communication skills and customer care. Oh. Career path within customer services. No, you can't see these. All right, so I'll just read some of them out. All right, front of house. Do you want to be a front desk assistant? Some of you are going to say no. <laughs> All right. Do you want to be a supervisor? That would be a different question, isn't it? This is the question, or these are the questions that you must ask yourselves internally. Do you want to be a team leader? Or do you want to be a manager? Or do you want to be a regional director or owner? All right? Which you can be. These are the questions that you need to ask yourself. Where do I want to go? You said you've owned businesses. Straight away, potentiality with that. If you've owned businesses, you've got a business mind. Been a supervisor as well, you've been a supervisor, team oh. leader. What, what businesses did you do again? On oh, pubs and that, you said. Um, have a skip business, landscape gardening. Okay. Uh huh. Have, like, business within, well, it was all those, but within one business, like, obviously marriage stuff happened. Yes, so he's taken the business and. Yeah. Alright. Oh. Now I kept it for a while. Uh huh. And then. Well, one of them we split a lot. And you sold it on again. Okay, all right, so. Some people, yeah, all right, no, that's fine. Whatever you want to be, wherever you want to go, that's your choice. If you want to be the front desk assistant, then that's what you can be. There's nothing wrong with it. It's if you want to be. If you want to be that person, yeah. If you want more, you will get more. Whatever you focus on will become your reality. It depends on what you want. I always say, shoot for the moon and you'll hit the stars. 
Mm. So you shoot high, you always aim high, and then whatever happens, everyone's got these abilities. There's no differences between you and any millionaires. The fact that they got to the toilet and they got a bit more money than you, that's it. But they've put things, they've just mechanically looked at things with their mind and made money. And there's, way, and there's ways and means of doing this. You just go and look on eBay. Watch people and watch on how they are selling and what they are selling. And look at, their, look, look at how much they're making. Just on eBay, within a click of a button. Just on eBay. You'll find, you'll find that any business that works can be modelled. Any business. That I can promise you. Um, a rock of seed. Mm-hmm. And every night he gets home from work about seven o'clock and he sits there and he sorts the seeds out mm-hmm. and he bags them up and he mm. sells them on eBay. He's like, really? They've been on holiday three times. Yes. I know someone. Yeah, you can make you can make money any so business. Like what kind of sell. seeds is he selling? What? Chili seeds. Chili seeds. Tomato seed, everything. Okay. Now you know what any what business, any business can be modelled, mm-hmm. and uh, my son's twenty one. Uh, so he sells um, he sells um, different types of electronics, but he's looked at people's businesses and modelled his to that business there. That's what I want to compete with. He's undercut them slightly. He's buying from China. As things come back, come and he just se- he's selling. He's got a second product in now, and he's uh, the potentiality of of earning anything you want to do, you can do. That's customer services, though, but it's behind the computer, isn't it, where people can't see you? It's a different type of customer services. All right, so whatever you want to be, all right? Now, your role may involve, let's say your role within customer services. Customer services involves everything. Every day you sell yourself. To me here today, you're selling yourself, all right? You are selling yourself to a certain degree because I'm listening to you. I'm listening to what you're saying, some of the things that you're saying. When you go out and get your placements, you're selling yourself. A lot of the people that went out on placements, I know you've got to find your own. I know people have been saying you've got to find your own. But if you find a good one, guess what they'll do? They'll take you on after two weeks. They'll know, they'll miss you, and they'll start to rely on you. Give them four weeks on... Or two, is it two weeks you got placement? Four. People, so four. Voluntary generally leads to permanent employment. There's so many projects that we've done over, over uh, going over to Carnarvon Way, um, shaping my... Yeah, Flash. down there, yeah. I don't know how to say the words, I've been over there. There's people that have, so many people that have gone into work as a result of. So it depends on how you want to go about it. So your role may involve working with groups, working with people, or working one-to-one. Any one of those. It is essential that you develop your communication skills. That's what you need to self-audit. If you haven't self-audited, if you haven't done that internal audit, have you noticed how I'm asking questions? Good questions. If you ask the wrong questions, you get the wrong answers. If you say, why am I fat? Because you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the answer, yeah? You need to ask the right questions. How can I prevent myself? How can I get the body I want? That's the right question, isn't it? Rather than asking. Sometimes we've got this incorrect process of asking the incorrect question internally so mastering within mastery you master your mind and ask the right questions whilst i'm talking today we have five internal thoughts per one question per we have five internal dialogues going on within one thought so you're making a lot of assimilations as to what i'm talking about you're probably saying well is he making sense he might not be making sense is he? Isn't he? Is he? Isn't he? What a load of crap. I need to go home. Or, oh, I could do it going home so straight away. You probably have an all these internal dialogues going on. But all I'm saying to you is start asking the right internal questions and you will find that things will just fall into play within whatever you want. Whatever you want, whatever role you want, you can get it. Okay, all right, now. Uh, all right. 
Okay. Now your communications. And I've asked, I haven't really asked you directly how do you rate yourself, but your communications uh, must be clear. Must be clear. And when I say clear, I think of a friend of mine that went to collect. It was a, a large debt. It was about ninety thousand pounds. And it was these two business people that met up on the motorway. One wasn't getting on with the other, he owed him a lot of money. So a friend of mine was sat in, he had to facilitate the meeting. I said, what did you do in that meeting? And my friend turned around and says, well, we had coffee, we had tea, we had biscuits. And we laughed and joked. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? <laughs> nice little meeting. But he says, I didn't forget my outcome. The outcome that he wanted. Now, he collects, just collect a bit of money here and there. He said the outcome was, yeah, to ask the right question at the right time. If they sat down, they didn't have tea, coffee and biscuits. Guess what would have happened? It, there would have been friction, wouldn't there? between that meeting so within that meeting he asked the right question when do you when do you intend to repay now that we've had our laughs and jokes i'm not going to i don't want to have this meeting again when do you intend to pay what you owe to this clientele and how soon can we resolve the debt two good questions amalgamated into one and guess what the debt got paid it got paid but it was essential to go through, but not forget the outcome. So when you're having a dialogue with someone, when you're having a dialogue with a potential employer, it may well be, let's first of all get, let's first of all get a contact. When we're having a conversation with the customer, depending on what your role is, if I'm selling something, it may be, let's first of all get a nice contact and get some good rapport. And you know that hypnotist that I mentioned earlier on, Milton Erickson? You can look him up on YouTube if you want. Yeah? There's little bits on, and there's little bits about him. 80 years he did hypnosis for. And he said, when you have rapport with someone, that means when you've connected to someone, you can pretty much get them to do anything you want. Pretty much get them to do anything you want. So your words and the way you word in yourselves, you can get people to do things. Some of you are going to go away and obviously use that information. All right, now, so you must have an outcome. All right. Okay, what time is it on your watches, guys? 11 o'clock. 15 minutes, come back. Yes, is that all right? Have a little break. One of the secrets to effective communication, one of the secrets to getting through to people clearly and concisely introduction did the customer service advisor introduce themselves because you know if you want to build something you must have a solid foundation am I right if you don't have a solid foundation it will all topple over let me ask you a question when you are in a room and somebody mentions your name what do you do to say your name so it gets their they get your attention don't they so using someone's name clever salespeople use personal names if you if I want to get an unconscious rapport with name again? Naomi I will use her name a couple of times within yeah my opening conversation very quickly Naomi guess what and it's like I've known you for a long time what did I do Today, when I came in, the first thing, when I did my introduction, I got to know, I haven't remembered everybody's name, but I, I got to ask you your names, and I got to ask you a little bit about your backgrounds, didn't I? That was just to get some rapport with yourselves. If I hadn't have done that, you would have gone, well, what the hell's going on here? So that was my way of unconsciously getting rapport with you. There's other ways as well. When I say unconscious rapport, I refer to, you know, when you feel like you've connected to someone and you can just continuously talk to them. 
that's the kind of communication skills when that person feels so comfortable. And you know when you trust them, can you trust them, what are you going to do? You're going to buy off them. Because I, I can't see that person can't be, he, he can't sell me something that's bad, I trust him. I've won him over. All right, so introduction. Find out, yeah, first of all, you introduce yourself, especially if you have a complaint, introduce yourself. My name's such and such, I'm from so and so services. I'm one of the customer services advisors here. Yeah? Fantastic introduction. Then you go in and you say, well, what's your name, sir? Because I want to appease the person. What's your name? What's your name? Okay, your name is, all right, well, my name's so-and-so. And I'm speaking to, you're speaking to so-and-so. Uh, and, and your name is, and get both names. You've got both names, you're in. Once you've got the names, you're in. Then, yeah, be aware the customer only sees their need. So again, it's recognising what their need is. What do they want? They only see their need. Speak slowly and clearly. Some people rattle on a bit too fast, don't they? And when they do, guess what? You lose sight of what they're saying. You switch off, don't you? If someone's talking too fast for me, I will switch off. Be prepared to repeat information, especially if it's key pieces of information. Use a tone that reflects reassurance. I've already talked about body language and how powerful that is. Very powerful body language is. But you know your tone is even more powerful. The way, it's not what you say, it's the way you say something. If you say it in a certain way, you will make someone feel really reassured. And if you make someone feel really reassured, they will completely, invariably trust you. We talked about empathy, didn't we? Be empathizing. Be aware the customer, customer may need another source of intervention. They may need another source of intervention. I had a situation where, this is when I was working in Wolverhampton. Now, let's say that wall over there, there was somebody over there with a clientele. I'd finished my training and I was at my desk. This guy starts smashing, he got aggressive, he starts smashing his phone while he's talking to the job centre. And I saw him over there and I said, Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's what I said to him, yeah? Because you're smashing the phone down. There's a bit going on. He says, okay, it will take three of you to hold me down. That's what he said. Exact words. Now, I picked up very quickly what he wanted, just within that interaction. He wanted a physical restraint. I wasn't going to give him that. No way. I know what he wants. I know he's angry. Originally, he wants... His money from the job centre, that's what he wants, originally, but that now has changed. Think about it, when someone says, I don't care, have you ever said, I don't care? And when you've said, I don't care, don't you do something stupid? Aren't you prepared to go above your boundaries, aren't you? Now, I knew what he wanted, so I went over, and I gave him the fear of the unknown, which was, I'm coming over, hold on, I'm coming over! I mashed his voice tone, I went over to him, he was sitting there, and he was still smashing the phones. And I was looking at him, and he goes, I was looking at him, and I said, that won't get you nowhere. I, I, I put my voice down this time, because I was near him. I, I didn't want to give him the restraint, even though he pictured in his mind three people holding him down. I'm going to give him that. No way, somebody could get seriously hurt. So I said, I said, that ain't going to get you nowhere. I don't care. That ain't going to get you nowhere. I don't care. Good evening, sir. My name is Dick Hass. What's your name, sir? I was in. Just with the intro. He told me his name. As soon as I said my name is Dick Hass, and I went like that, he stood up and shook my hand. So I said, okay, right now, what do I want you to do? Okay, what's going on? I'll just stop my money. Yeah, okay, right, let me explain something to you very quickly, John. I've got his name now. John, you need to listen to me now. <laughs> He's already in there. John, what I want you to do is, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go away today. Go away, come back on Monday morning. There is no manager about. When you come back Monday morning, see that office over there? 
go to that office over there and speak to the manager and they will resolve your problem. That won't resolve your problem now. That behaviour definitely won't resolve your problem now. And I said, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll go away. I'll come back Monday morning. I botched him up. I botched him up till, till Monday.